Hi, Democrats. Today is Friday, March 8th, and it's time for the Chairs Daily Live. Happy Friday. Happy International Day of, of the Woman. Um, happy the day after the State of the Union speech heard around the world. Last night was incredibly inspiring. Um, and he answered, right? He answered for all of the Joe Biden is old. Joe Biden doesn't know where he is. Joe Biden is doddering and he just has to stick to the script that someone else writes him. He doesn't know what's going on. All of that was debunked last night. All of that was debunked last night. He was clear, concise. He was focused. He was on his game. And when he looked up from his speech, when he looked away from his speech and he talked to the crowd that was there, he was on point. He knew what he was talking about and he was able to go back to his speech. That is how you give a State of the Union speech. It wasn't full of grievances. It was all about my favorite line of the night. And here are a lot, but my favorite line of the night was, let's not forget, forget who we are. We are the United States of America. And it said, that was it. It said everything. It made me hopeful. Now, I was voting for Joe already. You guys know that. I was voting for Joe already. I was worried that he may, um, I, was, I was concerned that he may not face the tough issues, that he may not deal with this one person that the Republicans are holding up as an example of why we shouldn't um, continue to be the melting pot of a nation that we are. Um, I was worried that he wouldn't address that, but he addressed it head on. He said her name. He spoke to the parents. I was concerned that he would shy away from talking about what's happening over there um, between Israeli and Hamas. He took it straight on. As a leader, sometimes you have to talk about difficult things. As a leader, sometimes you have to talk about difficult things where people don't always agree with you. And what we saw last night was a leader. He talked about it head on. He answered questions that were kind of in the air. He dealt with folks and he looked the Supreme Court dead in their clump and said that when he's elected again, he's gonna make roll the law of the land again where it should be. It was a speech full of confidence that gave me confidence. Political speeches can be boring. And I do this all day. And sometimes I just want to watch schmaltz. I want to watch non con, um, things that don't mean anything, not con, ugh, what's the word I'm trying to come up with? Consequential things, things that just don't mean anything and just words. Well, I felt it important to watch the president last night. So I got substance. But I was treated to some non-consequential stuff. I was treated to some schmaltz um, in the form of the Republican response. I'm not sure if um, the senator knew what the words meant that she was reading. Now, I say that because of her body language. I'm not questioning her intelligence. She's an attorney. She's a sitting senator. However, when she was talking about things that she wanted us to be angry about, she smiled. Um, when she said that she was sitting at the kitchen table that she and her husband worry at, it was an insult to the intelligence of, of the American people. So I got my substance. I got my hope. I got my confidence from the president of the United States. And I got my sudsy, non-consequential words from a pretty person from the response from um, the Republican Party. Now, somehow, my Twitter feed is filled with Republicans. I didn't like what they, I don't know how they got there, but it's filled with Republicans trying to gaslight us and believe that Joe was angry and didn't say anything of substance. Not my president. He said things of substance. He dealt with the Supreme Court. He, he addressed the Israeli Hamas war. He talked about um, immigration and the border. He bragged on his accomplishments. 
He, he bragged on the unions and he stayed true to who he said he was when he first ran and who he's been this whole time. That he's all about building from the bottom up and the middle out. And that he's going to continue those policies. Meanwhile, the other side has a guy who gets out and rambles, talks about grievances, and tells us what his plan is. And his plan is to be a dictator, not just for one day. But his other plans, they don't have the label of dictator, but when you pick um, the when you pick the leaders and set them up where they don't have to go through Congress, that's a dictator. And that's what he's planning to do. When you announce that you will reinstitute a Muslim ban, we need to hear him, we need to listen, and we need to act accordingly. Joe Biden's predecessor, I'm going to use the same ter terminology that Joe Biden used. President Joe Biden's predecessor has said he's going to reinstitute a Muslim ban and that he's going to ship people off, leave, deport people who have been here for years. He's also said that he's going to institute a cabinet that doesn't have to answer to Congress. And then we have the president who is talking to the Congress about what's going on. He's willing to sign the border bill that we know is not a Democrat friendly border bill, but just so that something on the border is happening so we can stop talking about the border. He believes in the American people and he believes in America. So, I hope you're as fired up as I am. And I hope that the, the malaise and the disinterest and the, the, let's just call it disinterest that has been happening in Oklahoma where people are not paying attention to politics, where people are not engaged in the, in the process. I hope that that ended last night when you heard the real choice that we have. When you heard we have a president who cares about America and we have a president who cares about himself. I hope that you get engaged. And if you're still not ready to get engaged on a presidential level, okay, that's fine. But I hope that you get engaged in your city council races that are happening right now. I hope that you get engaged in your school board races that are happening right now. Every single state house race is on the ballot and those candidates are out there right now knocking doors and raising money and raising awareness. Pick one or two and get behind them. Get engaged locally. We have candidates running all over the state. Pick a house candidate, pick a city council race, pick a school board race, and then support them. Pick, you, pick a neighboring one and support them. Get behind them. Our local candidates need your help. So I am all fired up about the president. I'm all fired up by the president, and that's a national race because of last night. But I'm equally fired up about my state senator, who is on the ballot this year, about my state representative, who's always on the ballot. But I also have a city council race and a school, no, a school board race that I care about. It's happening right now, and we all have to be engaged. I have a city council race, but it's not mine. I have a city council race that I care about as well. <laughs> so it's important that we get involved. I plan to knock some doors tonight. I hope that you plan to knock some doors, write a check, help a candidate, because that's what it's going to take. So if you're not ready to be engaged in the presidential race, how about this? I have been ranting and raving about if you don't like what the president's doing, if you don't like what the president's doing, vote in a better Congress. Vote in a better Congress so that we get more of what we want because the president is not king and he has to go through the Congress and the Senate. Vote in a better Congress. And we have congressional candidates all over the states. So if you can't get behind the president, although I really wish you would, but if you can't get behind the president, at least get behind your congressional candidates. Because if you want better things coming out of Washington, you need a better Congress. And in Oklahoma, even our sane congressman is going after Social Security. Um, two of our Congress people, one of our Congress person, 
two of them. As soon as they got there, they hooked up with the extreme, the extremists on the right. They need to be replaced. They need to be challenged. And they're on the ballot. They're on the ballot. But our candidates can't make any headway if we're not out there actively working with them, act, out there actively working for them and supporting them. So city council, school board, county commissioner, mayor, state house, state senate, Congress, president, all on the ballot, all on the ballot, all have candidates all over the state. Pick a couple candidates, get behind them, help them, and have a wonderful weekend. Now, I hope I see a bunch of you um, at the Keith Ellison event. Keith Ellison will be um, speaking on a panel about what it's like to be a lawyer who runs for office um, in Norman tomorrow. And then there's a private reception also in Norman tomorrow. I hope to see you guys. Um, it's not too late to buy tickets. OKDemocrats.org. Okay, as soon as you click on the home page, you'll see his face there. Click on there, buy your tickets. See you tomorrow. Have a great weekend.